Welcome back to Road to Fire. We're a family of three documenting our journey to fire, financial independence, retire early. Let's chat about our June passive income report. I will share all of our current sources and a short update on our dividends earnings year to date with all real numbers like always, so please hang with me. We hit our highest earning ever in June. We are definitely trending in the right direction and it's very exciting. We had a really strong May passive income report, so I was beyond thrilled to see that we beat last month's numbers. June is our quarterly dividends payout month, but we still had strong growth in our other sources as well. The more passive income we can make, the closer we get to financial independence. Now I know we're chasing a 2.45 million fire number, but the ultimate goal is to have enough income coming in to cover our monthly expenses. We've cut all we can or can cut to stay comfortable, so working on our income side of the equation is our key focus. Now I've shared this before, but here's a list of our five passive income focus areas. Our strategy has not changed a lot, but our focus areas have shifted just a little bit. Now these five focus areas are outlined in an order of importance for us and might change, but I doubt it. Now first will always be rental income, and I'm working to post our rental portfolio strategy this month. Second is dividends, and I created an entire playlist on how we're working to build a dividends portfolio to help us sustain us in the future. Then we have affiliate marketing, which has started to grow and I'm beginning to see the value in it as I only support brands or products that I currently use. And the last two is drop shipping or online business and e-products. Now, I really wish I had more time to focus on e-products, but we'll see how that changes in the future. Here is a quick recap on our May passive income report. This was the first month where YouTube earnings was over 50% of our total earnings. And that was because of one key video that I'll link here. Now we also had our highest ever earnings with affiliated marketing. It seemed small overall, but was big for me. Now I was never a fan of affiliated marketing until I started watching Panda Boss and learned how she began to grow and scale this income source. And if you're looking to learn more about affiliated marketing to get started, she has a really great video on her channel detailing her process, so check it out. So here's our current passive income report for June 2021. To be clear though, this accounts for what we earned in June. Most, but not all payments have hit our account yet, and that includes YouTube and Ibotta earnings. So first is the standard for us, and we received $1,200 from rental income. And this will be the same until we get our next property in the next few months. The second source is from Google AdSense. Now May was an outstanding month and June was almost as good. We earned $1,263.61 from YouTube and that was driven by increased views on two of our videos. We then received $82.28 from Cashback, which is almost double from last month as we had a few unexpected expenses that we used our card for. The biggest was the deposit for my son's new school. And for Ibotta, I earned $3.40, which is lower than normal, but I did get more referrals that is reflected in our affiliated marketing line. Interest again on our Capital One accounts came in at about $6.31, which is about the same from last month, and it's always a bore to talk about. But affiliated marketing came in at $100, which was driven by my M1 Finance link and Ibotta links in my description box below. I absolutely love both apps and their platforms and always am willing to talk about them. For dividends, our quarterly dividends income has finally came in and that's at $951.98. I absolutely love quarterly dividends month. We will definitely share how we're tracking to our year-to-date numbers in a couple of minutes. And last month, I added details on my drop shipping business or my husband's drop shipping business and I'll be making a business income budget to outline what's happening there separate from our passive income reports. So in June, we earned a whopping $3,607.58 in passive income, which is our highest month yet and almost a $300 increase from last month. So for our side hustle gain, it was higher than last month, but not outstanding. So for surveys, I made $172.59, which is about $40 more than last month, heavily driven by prolific surveys. I do also use Survey Junkie, but only for pre-screening opportunities because that tends to pay more. I do have a link to their platform below if you're interested. And again, no online sales last month, and this is the line item for OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace. I really need to go and review our postings to see what's happening there. And still nothing on partnerships, but I'm having great conversations with amazing companies, just waiting on the right company that fits my niche overall. So in total, we made $172.59, and that's all from surveys. Now surveys is such a simple, no brain needed side hustle and I absolutely love it. So here's our 2021 dividends tracker. 
This outlines the dividends we have received this year from our index funds as well as our individual stock portfolio that is currently within Robinhood but moving to M1 Finance this month. Now I outlined why I love M1 Finance in my last portfolio video and I'll link that here if you want to get into the details. But if you want to transfer to an amazing platform, M1 Finance is the best one out there right now. I do have a link in my bio if you care to check it out with a limited free $50 sign-on bonus if you're new to M1 Finance. But as you can see, we received the bulk of our dividends from our index funds and this includes our taxable and non-taxable accounts within Robinhood. But our focus area is to create a tiered quarterly dividends payout that allows us to have monthly dividends. Now I learned this tip from Alexandre who was kind enough to leave a detailed comment in one of my last videos. Year to date, we are averaging about $307 in dividends a month and that's much better than I could have hoped for. So our goal is to have about $1,000 a month in dividends in the next 10 years. We are about 30% to that goal right now and I don't really know if this goal is tangible or not. I just put a time frame on it so we have something to work towards. Now I feel like a goal or a vision without a timeline is just a dream. So as our portfolio continues to grow, I know our dividends will so I'm not worried about this goal. We will continue to invest via the DCA method and watch our dividends grow over time. Now I've received so many great tips from this community that has helped me better outline a solid strategy for us. Now if you met me three years ago or even two years ago, dividends would never have been on our radar. But I have to state the obvious, two of our biggest income sources this month will be taxed. First is our dividends. We received over $950 in dividends this month, but right now all of our dividends are currently reinvested, but if we decided to withdraw them, we would have to pay taxes on them. Work with your local financial advisor in your state or country to better understand your tax implications for dividends. And about YouTube. We received over $1,200 in gross YouTube revenue. Now we do have a taxes sinking funds, but it's about 33% funded to our goal of about $6,000. So I think I may need to increase this as our YouTube income continues to grow. So we are trending over our target passive income monthly goal. Yay to hitting another micro goal. But here's our passive income trend graph for the year. We have had two very strong months back to back that has pulled up the average overall. We started the year off on a good position, but now are averaging about $2,300 a month in passive income, pre-tax of course. Say we were not reinvesting our dividends and we're using that income that would have covered over 75% of our base expenses outside of investing in savings right now. Now I can't emphasize how great of a month we've had and how motivated it is to see these numbers, especially on days when I feel blah or not motivated to post or upload videos. So I shared how we're progressing towards our mid-year goals and increasing our side hustle income is one of them. We are about 32.6% towards our goal, which is more than expected, but way behind where we need to be at this time frame. Keep in mind that the earnings we made in June are paid out in the following month, so that's not included in these numbers here. But a side note, this year alone, I have made about $1,000 in online surveys alone. I'm not sure I will ever be able to stop taking surveys because one, I feel like my demographic is never included in most of these studies, so I have a voice to kind of help and share that. And two, it's so simple and easy to make quick cash. But July is tracking a bit lower than June already, and that is okay. Now I don't expect every month to be just as good as June, but wouldn't it be nice? Now I am still happy with our overall progress because this time last year we were making just about $200 a month in passive income. So yes, we've come a long way. But I would say that YouTube is the biggest bogey of all of our sources right now. It's just so fickle. But I am addicted. I've grown to love making these videos and connecting with everyone on this platform more than I ever thought I would. Now the next focus is to get our current unit rental ready. We are lucky to be in a desirable location near all the bustle of downtown, but we will have to make some maintenance projects and get that updated and done soon. Landlords, if you have any tips on how to determine reasonable renting rates, please share your tips below. I hope to have our unit posted by the end of July for a mid or early September move in. Now, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Until next time.